Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community Meeting. And this is a uh, public meeting. So which are the, the calls that we have now, just trying to have more of a public forum and share our updates and details about our progress of our community. So this is our April 24th, 2022 conference calls. So what I do have is uh, I have a few attachments I'm going to go through just to make things more interactive. So the first attachments I'm going to actually start with. I want to talk about the email that we have out that uh, we sent to anyone that's interested in our Black Star Pan African community. And wanted us to share that because for the most part it's information that um, that anyone that's interested in. Uh, you know, must have, must read to have complete clarity, or less, uh, unless, uh, or I will say otherwise, it's going to be confusion. But even through the email, it's a lot of attachments and uh, details. But at the same time, too, it's a big move and it's a big investment. Uh, we we talk about uh, living and doing business in Africa, uh, specifically Ghana. Right, so I got, I got the email set. So let me uh, get it set up on screen sharing. All right, perfect. So hopefully everyone can see the information. So this email is called Join Black Star Pan African Community in Ghana, Getting Started Process with Membership Application Requirements, Bylaws, Overview Samples, and more. Phase one and two plots are ready for purchase. Uh, yes, I know it's a long uh, title, but um, that's just that people know that all those things are there. But instead of just having a bunch of emails and things, let's put everything on this one e email and when you open the email, you're going to see some JPEG attachments. And then you're also going to see some other attachments in PDF. Uh, so the best thing I would recommend for anyone that's interested in our community, once you request the email and I send it to you, just literally download all of the files. Like right here on my screen, it shows download for all. So once you download that, it's going to send it to more than likely the download folder, and it's going to be one big folder. So once you open it up, let's take your time. Um, some of them are just images and details. So what I'm gonna do also is just read off the list of everything that we have on the attachments. So once I scroll down to the email, it's also another thing. It's also a long email. And I'll go through what we have on the email itself. But uh, when, you, when you scroll down right before the end of the email, it talks about important attached files information including legal documents and sample. So the goal is always to just make sure everybody have all of this information and things. And also it's to encourage people who are going to countries like Ghana and they're making these bad decisions about land uh, investment to just say, hey, before you commit, make sure the people give you something, some kind of track record, some kind of documentation and make sure that you, know, you have, make sure you have accurate information on what's going on in the land on the community and make sure that the people you're dealing with the chiefs and the people around them and everything is clear. So what we have done to make this uh, work good is just hire a staff of people. Uh, we have one attorney and then we have another attorney that watches and look over what everyone else is doing and consultant. And we have some few good people there in Ghana that handle business for us to make things work because for the most part, I'm only there in Ghana on average about the tour is 10 days and sometimes I may stay back a few days longer, but the reality of it is, is, you know, I have other business and things to do and I do them all here in my office here in um, Georgia. And in order to make this true international business, we have a full setup there in Ghana. So we do have an office there in Jihad and that's right directly across from the actual land. So we have we have a person that manages the office and he's the second, sorry, he's the first vice president. His name is Azibo Ajani. And so he's there managing that operation. And when people show up on the land, he takes them, you know, he takes them to the land. When they show up to, to the office, he take them to the land. So 
that's one of the coordination that we've been able to build. And then we have a secretary and then we have another person. She's, you know, she's a secretary in training as we're trying to develop a younger generation of people to, you know, so we can do business with. All right, so, and the, the setup and the goal is to make sure that we go through all of these details. So when anyone is ready to go to Ghana, because some people have told me, as a matter of fact, a lot of people have told me that they want to wait till they get to Ghana. I tell them that's absolutely fine. When you get to Ghana, I'm not always there. I'm only there twice a year. And then we do the land tour May 29th and also December 29th. As far as this year, next year, it's only May 29th. As far as the land tour, we leave from Accra and then take it to the land. So usually what we're doing is trying to just make sure that people are clear on these things. That way, when they show up on the land, everything is clear. And if they need to fill out anything and do anything, they can just get it done here. Uh, so that's a system that is uh, set up. And we're also approaching... We're well over two and a half years on this project. And the most important thing is the documents that I'm telling people because that's the hardest thing to get accomplished there. Once you get those things accomplished, then you can start focusing more on getting people to build and things like that. But a lot of times people are, are caught up into you know, issues with documents and not having certain things. So I'm happy that we was able to get all the main things that we need to do. And the only thing that uh, we have not completed is the land registration, which we're trying to work out a deal with the Lands Commission to do payments for them. So as the people make payments, we get them, you know, their registration in the system. The issue is they want all of us to do the registration. So we're just going to have to work it little by little. Uh, but beyond that, uh, a full survey uh, and full lease and documents, uh, which I'll read to. So the first one is a sample membership application and PDF file. National criminal um, record sample uh, search. So the example that we have, um, basically saying that you can use another example or use another uh, company uh, to do your national criminal background check. Uh, so that's uh, one thing. Uh, membership application in PDF and Word. So if it's easier for you to upload a PDF online and then fill it out and sign it digitally, that's absolutely fine. But if it's not and you just it's easier just to do it in Word, then you have that option. So most of these most of these attachments have uh, you know PDF and another file. Uh, your passport uh, with the your passport information and signature page uh, need to be scanned like example. So the attachments that I talk about, you now these are, you know, you'll see all of these documentation in that folder. Passport style photo in JPEG. Um, so that's one of the, the, the hardest things sometimes is the best way to do your passport photos or anything like that is to literally scan them. And sometimes, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you're doing these things and you're using them, using your camera or you're using your phone camera, I should say, to take these uh, images. And for the most part, they're not going to come out as smooth as you need them to come out with. But if I recommend that everyone to scan everything that they have and keep a copy of it, because some of these things are going to be things that you're going to need to do when it's time to do your residency or any other documentation. All right, and one of the most important thing that we have is a eight page document called Black Star Pan-African Community Overview and it's in PDF and it's a mandatory read and sign. So all of the need to know about the community, why are we doing it, our mission, vision, and what type of people we're looking to connect with, it's all there. Uh, it's something that, it's a lot of information and things like that. So once you even click on the, the website link, from africaforafricans.org and then you click on Black Star Pan-African Community, all of those files that you see are gonna be, are gonna be a representation of the, the community overview. You're gonna start with an introduction and you're gonna end up with, um, you're gonna end up with the, the final document, which is usually, I'd have to get to the website, see what documents I have on there also. Let me, Let me load that page real quick, all right? So last document on there is reference to this document, which is called Getting Started. But what it will have is just a portion of the getting of this email and so on. So it's broken down on the website. If you take your time and go to the first article, which is introduction, and you go to the last article, which is Getting Started, you have covered 100% of the information. Uh, so I've created just the email version of that because some people, it's easier for them to deal with on the email, especially since they can download the attachments. And that's the advantage to the email. You have the attachments and sample documents.
we also have a list of committees and this hasn't exactly gone the way you want it to go, but it's, uh, it's something that we're gonna exercise more. So once we more set up in Ghana, we have a list of 10 committees and the goal is always to get one or two people to commit to the committees. But uh, so we're gonna be reorganizing that energy, but mo for the most part, based on whatever the needs are in the community, we just usually work that angle. And once we just build the group up to more people and then we have more people that's open to these things, uh, then we'll be good to go. And we could just start really just pushing our committees. Uh, so right now I have a WhatsApp uh, group for all of the committees, our board, and also just our general group. Hit the a site map uh, layout and survey of 50 plots in phase one, both in JPEG and PDF. Phase two expansion with 60 acre survey layout in JPEG and PDF. Uh, also there's a uh, sample, there's a sample uh, layout. And that layout is just how we started with the 15 acres. You just kind of mark the paper and lay out where you want the roads is and where you want the land and we want the business and community center. So all of the, the draft of what we're doing comes from this printing out the survey and then this using your ruler and using your pencil, just like in school and this mark or, in, or just like in technical school and you mark and you create the drawing and then you send it to a professional surveyor and he just, he, he used the real uh, survey uh, software to like literally just lay this thing out. And that's why the 15 acre layout looks real nice and digital. Uh, Ghana Certificate of Incorporation, uh, both in JPEG and PDF. Uh, so once you even click on that document, it will give you, uh, you know, give you the the numbers and things like that. So I'm always telling people, especially people who may not just know us like that, tell them you know whatever level of research you want. If you want to forward the email to your attorney or your consultant or people that you have in the country, and you want them to check out these documents and go to the courts and see if all this is real. Uh, all the best, absolutely. I uh, definitely recommend everyone always do their due diligence and do their research and things like that. Because that's one of the things that if more of us do these things, we would have less issues with the land situation that we've dealt with in Ghana since I've been traveling there. And it's and that's that also discouraged me for many years to, to do what we ended up doing with the Black Star Pan-African community, making our own deal, bringing our own people in place so we can structure something that will work for us. Uh, work for us, or I would say work specifically for the groups of people that connect with us that you know, like the things that we've been talking about ever since we've been doing the Africa for the Africans tours. All right, another important document, land lease, uh, 99 year signed by board members and signed by Nana Haiti and his board. So these are court stamp documents that shows all of our board members sign it, their, their board members sign it, and then the attorney getting it st stamped at the uh, courts in Ghana. And it's the same thing with the, the two surveys, the 15 and the 60 acre survey. Once the Lands Commission stamped that survey, that's a legal document. Uh, that, can, that also means that you, you know, that all deals and everything has been sealed and agreements have been made and everything. So that's another document someone can go to the Lands Commission and check out. And I'm saying that because just trying to encourage other people out there because before I even started this business, when I was in, in transit to this traveling to Ghana over the years, it's just like so many of this negative stuff about land. And I have had several members that have traveled me not connect with us so I can use my connections and help them. Instead, they went off to someone because either they were in a relationship or maybe the person told them some sweet lies and things like that. But only thing I know for sure is there is no legal proof of anything and those things were never followed. So this is also an encouragement to tell people like, I'm willing to put all of this up and say, hey, we're in this kind of business and these are all of our documents. And then you ask the person, if you, you know, compare what we're doing to someone else before you make a decision, but to, to not connect with us and say, hey, I'm gonna deal with this person because the land is, you know, the land is you know, cheaper. Like people literally are fall for that. And, you know, like there's, a, there's one or two companies there in Ghana, these are Ghanaian companies. What they do is they specialize on shaking us down for deposits. And then they know that we're not gonna be taking them to court for $500,000 deposits. So they, they, they do these things and so on. And it's, it's sad because they could have really helped a lot of us. 
And instead, they just do these kind of things. And I'm not here to talk bad about you know, people of God or anything. It's just specifically for the people that are involved in these corrupt type of business and things like that. And so this aspects of what I'm pushing will help people think about it. They can just say, hey, I saw a presentation from Bomani. He had all these documentation and everything. He's even shown videos of the drones on the land and interviews with all kinds of people, with people living on the land, homes being built and things like that. Yeah. And for me, that becomes this more realistic situation. And now they can say, hey, you know what, I'm going to step up my research and make sure that what I'm dealing with, the people that I'm committed to and connecting to, they're committed to, to, you know, for my dreams to come through of living and doing business in Africa and just enjoying my home and being in a nice community. And then uh, if you scroll back down, all right, let me see. So being a land lease, then you have example of individual plot survey. So I'll put an example of uh, plot 46 and that's how your legal document will look. So we have group documents and also we have individual documents. Uh, 16, the brochure, which I'm gonna switch over and show you some of these things also on screen. Uh, JPEG and PDF brochure, also send these things on like WhatsApp and just text message them and always just asking people maybe you could afford them and share them or this process. And then looking at information and see if you'll be open to reading more information because that's all the brochure is. It's just an introduction to this the information. And the most important thing that the brochures or the flyers are going to always have is just the website and the links to all of the social media pages. And, and the last thing is the draft 60 acres of 240 plots, commercial and residential. And then once you stroll on past that, it's a cancellation refund policy information and then all of the social links and things on the email. So that is uh, the important attachments. Now scrolling back up, I just give an introduction and we talk about phase one and phase two organizing it. Uh, and then our vision for phase three. Now phase one and phase two is, phase one is residential, phase uh, two is residential and commercial. So anybody wanna you know, build a, a warehouse, do just any kind of this commercial op operation, that is the perfect location to do it. Um, right now, the phase one is a, is a representation of building a nice 15 acre community with a community center, a security post area, a business center, and then and then 50, uh, you know, 50 plots uh, may not exactly be 50 homes, but uh, this a nice uh, community full of homes to where we can market to the rest of our folks in Daspa and let them know that we can build a beautiful community in Africa and we can, you know, we can connect together and do great social programs because we've got our brother, um, uh, Vice President Azibo, he's there and he has organized a youth movement and also we brought our group there to support the orphanage. And we're trying to do as much um, things in that area because it's one of those things where if you're not in like one of those popular cities and things like that uh, in, in Africa, you know, many children just don't get the access of opportunities or the level of education. So by us even building a business center and us uh, you know, basically just running the business that we run here, which is uh, technology and business um, administration or, or, or services, and in Africa tours and investments, you can literally just run business from there. And then the, you, the younger generation of people that you're gonna have, since we always talk about Africa, this uh, incredible young generation, they'll be able to learn up from a teenager. Like my son, I've been teaching them technical operations since he's two years old and things like that. And the little boy is very efficient, but that's the level of what we have to do to compete with the rest of the world. So that business center, which I'm working on different ways to fund in it um, and, and things like that, which I'm, I'll probably get into more in the future, but I'm doing a few things here to just get access to the resources that we need to get uh, both the community and business center done. And then I'm hoping that everyone can kind of handle their situation with building their homes and things like that. And then we can always come together on the things that we really need to, other things that we need to do. Uh, Cause I'm, and I know, I know the, the, the road situation is a little different. You know, it's like hearing this, uh, you know, here what we used to is like you, you know, you build, you know, you build a home somewhere and then next thing you know, you have infrastructure and everything, but in Ghana, it doesn't work that way. You either have to just kind of build a relationship with the people in government, or you have to get contractors, or you have to do it yourself, or you have to wait for the government get a chance to get to the roads that you need to get to. And so most of the roads are going to be focusing on our, our major roads. And the major road that comes into the town, all paved, all the way from our town to the next town, Winneba. But then when you start building your own land and everything, then that's gonna be a little tricky. So looking um, to connect with more people on, 
and who's willing to do some of these research and willing to just get out there and and just kind of coordinate and organize things because I honestly can't keep up with but so much and I'm just gonna always just do my best to work on whatever is the priority uh, because I don't want to you know I don't want to put no pressure on anyone to this to, you know to do more than they're willing to do and things like that so it's just a volunteer based situation. And the, the phase two land is when we're really gonna get into the industrial energy and things like that. So let me just uh, read off what I have here uh, for uh, phase one and phase two. Phase one of the initial 15 acres with 50 plots has three plots still available, right? But the part I need to come down to is uh, phase two, right? So out of the 240 plots, half of that will be for literally commercial. So this will include 30 plots for farming, uh, the 120 is already residential, 24 for apartments slash condos. So if a few of us get together and say, we wanna, get, we wanna use this plot to build apartments, you know, that's ideal because not everybody is looking to come from the DAS and move to Ghana and just build a house from scratch. So maybe they can do an investment with, with some of us and we just we all put our money together and then now that's your apartment and that's my apartment and we actually own these apartments. You can call them condos or whatever individuals wanna call them. Uh, 32 plots for on-site commercial investments. And those are the plots for if any of us want to build anything. Four for a community center, four for medical center, four for education slash training, four for maintenance uh, building, and eight for additional community and business center. So one would also build another community and business center. And the community center really represents our connection with our, our children and our people in the town and things like that. And uh, like, you know, we all, most of us have been around things like YMCA's or programs in the summer when you're out of school and they have it all set up. Like America have all the cool stuff set up like, and it does, does, it does not work like that in Africa. So the thing you're telling people is like, if you wanna see these things, you know, we have to just get them worked out. Uh, but the maintenance uh, facility, uh, if you have, if we have whatever kind of equipment we have, you know, we're maintaining it. And that's one of the things that um, I realized in the, in the country Maintenance is not really taken that serious, and I, but I come from a straight aircraft maintenance background uh, from 18 all the way to 28, just from the, the US Navy to the airlines. And then after that, in my 30s contracts and things like that. And it is a serious business maintaining what you have. You, know, you spend all these money on machines, you have to maintain, you spend money on building homes or building a town, you know, you maintain it. Uh, things like making sure that uh, we go around and the town is completely clean. And that's one of the things I was impressed when I first got there. I was because one of the things that I'm always looking for, because you know you, you don't want to bring your your brothers and sisters into an area where it's just trash and nasty. Uh, the beach now is a little bad because it wasn't like when it was open. They always had work parties to clean the beach up. Uh, so very impressed by those things, and you know we can just all be a part of the social things that's going on in the town. And then anyone who have any of these skills, you know they can you know. You could be in a business center and you can you know, get your training on and things like that. And then I'm sure we can work out building our, you know, the education set, there's four plots for education. So it's, it's one of those things you build something all age education, you know, no matter how old or young you are, you can come get some education from the people that are professors and have the background, like some of the people on this call and some of the other people that we have in the group. Uh, some of us make great educators because some of us have that background, whether it's technical or just straight, just academics, you know, it's all needed. And the vision for phase three is that vision that I have that's being born in Jamaica and you're wondering like you, how this happened, you know, you're born in a country and you, you know, you, you're on one side of the country and then you go to the north side of the country or the north coast as we say it in Jamaica and they have the most incredible resorts and, I'm, and this is something that you don't see in any other country, like almost every single brand of high of, of resorts, the most popular ones in the world, especially the, the, the American and the uh, European brands are all there from Negril, Jamaica, all the way to Montego Bay, to Ocho Rios, to Port Antonio and other places in, in between. And you see that the, the most important thing was the fact that those, those corporations literally just the main thing that they want they focus on is getting land and they did they got the land by any means i don't know what means they got the land by but i know our people are not rich from them getting the land uh so and i know not, not much is being contributed other than you know certain positions which are the slave wager positions but that's the situation so 
you know, so you, you grow up in, in, in Jamaica and then you go back and you enjoy tourism and vacation and then you're like, wow, what if we own some of this real estate? It's not saying it's too late, but, but it's a little bit different to compete with these corporations that's established and things like that. So what I decided and I spoke to my family, I was like, we just need to get some land in Africa and we, you know, by the, close to the beach and, you know, find some of our people who are willing to, you know, put their energy together and build villas, resorts, uh, build docks, have, you know, have ships out there, have water sport activities and things like that there. Uh, so those are the things that uh, we talk about. So right now I'm communicating with the chief to just basically let us know what, you know, what beach access land he owns. So they have not gotten around to that, unfortunately, uh, but the goal is to make sure that they get around to it and then start you know, to start, uh, start a basic payment plan. The best thing I like to do with deals, you sign a deal and you just make payments and then you start making payments. And that's how we pay for the 15 acres of land. And then we, we, right now we're paying on the 60 acres of land and we've been able to get the chief to just really just do some things for us up front by exact, by even just making sure that we have the survey up front. Because usually you have to pay them a lot more money on the another, next land deal to get those things done. But that's the level of trust that we have built. You know? um, we trusted him and he trusted us. And so that relationship is going well. Uh, just need to get the office there going. That way the people there at our office can communicate more with the chief and the survey and other people to make sure that this phase three is a, you know, is, is a vision that will work. And then looking to reach out to a lot of other people out here in the diaspora for us to just make this work. And so what you would have, you know, you have a beautiful town with a nice, you know, or I should say now a beautiful beach town. You know, and, and for those of us who've been to some of the nicer beach areas in, a, in America, like Panama City Beach in Florida, Daytona Beach, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami Beach, or South Carolina, um, Myrtle Beach, uh, just to name a few just here in the South and things like that. And this, you know, you go there, you know, last time I was in Panama City Beach and I was just, and it's just like, you know, it's like, it's nice, but it's like, man, it's like, you know, where's our level of ownership anywhere? So I realized that it's just what it is in America. And um, for the most part, you know, we just outcompeted by everybody else. Not saying that we're not outcompeted by, you know, the Indians, the Chinese, and the Lebanese, the dominant forces in countries like Ghana, but they haven't made their way out to those areas yet and start buying up land, you know. But I did hear of a Canadian company closer to Tema that's buying up land, like it's just, you know, like, like it's nothing. So that energy is coming soon. So people like myself trying to encourage other people, in, especially in other African countries, to do the same. I'm telling my brothers in Sierra Leone to make the deal with the government and get access to land and you know we just push a diaspora community and the diaspora community don't mean that no people from the African continent can come on there and things like that because there's a bunch of misconceptions of people just you know they listen to your videos and then they come up with their own narrative just so they can get views and donations and things like that but like they probably do the same to this video also but it's one of those things where you know we're it's not much you can really do other than just let people know to you know that we need people to be critical thinkers and need people to do their due diligence and research and also to communicate with a source and I'm the source. A lot of times there's a lot of things that goes on and sometimes you're telling people that if you wanna know what's going on, communicate with me. I'm available, 20, uh, not 24 seven, but uh, seven days a week. And if you don't get me, you can message me and in whatever way you message or communicate with me. And you know, I'm a person that, you know, it's committed to getting back to my brothers and sisters, especially if they call about Africa tourism investment. That's our, our foundation business and things like that. So the cost of the land itself, you're looking at $500 administrative costs. So when I talk about lawyers and having people around and having an office and having all those things and, and clearing land and doing certain things, you're using that budget to take care of those things and more. And then the land cost uh, is $3,000 per plot. Uh, the additional cost is the three fifty for the survey, and then the seven hundred dollars for the land registration. Which I've told everyone else basically just hold off on making that payment, and I'm trying to just get a better deal than we had, and trying to work it out to where they put everything in writing. Like the most important thing is the payment plan part, um, so that that way when we collect the money, we can just send it over and just keep that going. Uh, so those things are a tricky thing. So we have gotten everything done except for the registration. So I'm actually proud of that. Some people, you know, people make videos and say, these guys don't have this done and things. And I just laugh, that's all I can do because it's easy to sit here and just judge someone doing this stuff. And this is very complicated. This is, this takes your whole life to get done, right? And, and it's a lot at stake. So 
doing the best we can do. And that's why I have a lot of advisors and a lot of people that we make sure that, you know, we communicate with that, that are, you know, that's a lot more experienced than us in this business. Uh, like I have a lot of people in Ghana has been here for 30, 40 years. Um, and we have people that used to work for the Lands Commission and things like that. So we're well connected uh, with experience and connection. So I'm always also telling anybody if they're looking to do anything and they need to, to use our contacts in any country for any reason, I got their back. And so those are the, the cost breakdown and things like that. And, um, and that's the, you know, that's um, the main thing that we ask everybody to do is to read the email itself, the body of the email, go to all the attachments and then you know, go to the read and sign, which is the, you know, which is the community overview and the bylaws. Now the application is just fill out and sign. So those things are highlighted in red. So family, uh, that is it uh, for the uh, email and just wanted to get right into it because I just want anyone that's even listened to the call to basically just email me and reach out to me and let me get this email to you and we just go through it and then you can see if it's if this works for you and everything. Now the additional documentation or what I talked about was the brochure. So this is our beautiful brochure it represents this, you know, this uh, to the left, that's uh, our consultant Kwabana. Uh, this was the original surveyor, uh, myself in the middle, our chief, and then our attorney. Uh, so I have the um, introduction right there below the, the photo and then all of our contacts and social pages. Then the picture is me and um, our vice president Azibo. And that is our beautiful three bedroom, two bathroom house there in Ghana. And that is not our community, but the best thing for us to do was to show some love and let's get, you know, get an office there and be in good social connection with the, you know, with that actual, with, with that uh, estate and let them know that, hey, we have people coming and their homes may not be finished. So we want to get access to some of these uh, apartments and homes. And so that's the foundation of that. So if anyone is looking to move to Ghana, what I recommend them to do is this, get one of these units, it's $2,000 a year. Uh, if you're gonna stay in Accra, I would say your rent is gonna probably be about $6,000 a year. That's gonna be on average about $500 a month, more or less depends on how much space you have, but the city is becoming very, very expensive and things like that. And plus, even in this rental we have, it's, it's a big backyard and uh, we still have access to grow whatever we need to grow because it's a unit that we're gonna keep for a few years until our business center is built to where we can run business from our business center. But since we don't have that access to get those things done now, the best thing to do is just have this representation. So I do have one video when we first got the office, uh, when we went there in December 29th, the office, we just literally got it like, like earlier that week. So when we went there, there was nothing in there and it's not much still in there, but our goal is to get it going little by little and set it up to, and you know, do like you know they do it here in in, in America when you, know, you you show up at one of these real estate places and they have their nice little office and then they put you on a golf cart and they drive you around and show you the property. And that's like some so those are some of the things I've been impressed about being in America, especially here in Georgia, since that was my age of just when I got here, I was trying to get a house and things like that, and been able to have, you know check out other properties and you know I like how the real estate operation is done here. So I'm copying some of those uh, things, you know, because I'm always telling people there's a lot of good stuff in America, you know. It's not all bad and things like that. So let's take the good and use it and it's not having to reinvent the wheel. And then, you know, when the people that we're dealing with from the diaspora, when they connect with us, they'll, they'll be connecting to a process that they're more used to dealing with and things like that. So right there, you'll see the driveway, there's no vehicle in there, but the goal is to, to get, a, you know, get transportation to where, you know, we don't have to walk the people up to the land because their vehicle, with taxi or whatever they came in, came in is going to be scared to drive up on the land depends on the time of the year because you need to it, especially during the rainy season and things like that so the road is another very important thing that we have to figure out sooner than later all right and um looking down from the picture of me and azibo and we we showed up the first group which is december 29th 2019 and that was before this, the world is cheap before, that was before this uh, pandemic happened and things like that. And that was our, our last really big group. And we're there meeting the chief and everything. So I'm always telling people that that's one of the things that we have set up is, you know, you meet the chief, you can connect with him and uh, his folks and you get to see where they live and where they are. So that's one of the things is being full transparent and, and connecting. And that's all of his elders and people like that. So 
the office that we have is not too far from there and things like that. So we can always just walk over there and, and it's just, it's just a good setup to actually be doing business with people that you have direct connection with and they're not mysterious people that no one knows. So all of us, as you can clearly see, we're showing our face, we're showing who we are. And all of us have wonderful careers that none of us are going to jeopardize and things like that. Uh, especially the chief, he has, he has more to lose than anyone else because he's in the world of uh, courts and gov uh, courts and magistration and things like that. And, you know, he's a very humble man and things like that. And what he always tell me is that, that, you know, is really honestly nothing that he can do with all the people that are jealous of him. And it's the same thing I'm telling people that that's the issue that me and him having. He has the people that have issues with him there in the town that, because he's, you know, he's progressive, you know, well-educated, progressive person and things like that. So um, just want to let people know that we're all nice, good guys and we're all about our people and things like that. And, but we also run a business enterprise. So you have to be strong and you have to be, you know, you have to stand up and things like that. Now, uh, this is a public bathroom that was built by our members. And I'm telling people that we're showing a lot of love and it, it's a public toilet and then it has their name, Leonard and Carmen Burns. And they, you know, they, that's their home also on the right. Uh, they're the first members to actually live there. And it's, it's, I still can't believe it because they came with me in December, 2019. And next thing you know, they're in Ghana in September, 2020. Like as soon as the country opened up, they were there. And I remember them telling us on the tour that they were going to move to Ghana and things like that. I didn't think they were actually going to move with, move and actually be on the community with us because when we first took everybody out there, it was funny because people asked me what we go doing. I was saying, we're looking at land. I was like, it was like, where's the land? I was like, this is land. There's nothing on there. I was like, and there was actually, there was like, it's all grass and all these things. I was like, yeah, it's this, it's raw land. And I was like, I've seen the white folks in, uh, you know, here in Georgia, you know, by driving by all these sites all the time, I've seen them just do it. And by the time you turn around, they have a whole, you know, they have a whole setup. I was like, this is just where we have to start at. And then we can just figure it out and things like that. So just showing you the growth of the, the vision and the other part of the brochure, uh, you see, you, you see uh, us with uh, one of our uh, builders and it's a, you know, a few guys in the black, uh, you know, black shirts. And you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna see plot 21. That's the, the we have more and updated pictures. Like some of these photos, it's like you think about a home, by the time you put these things up, then three, three months go by, then it's almost finished. So these are the, so below is plot 28 and plot 29. I'm looking at Kamal uh, property on the brochure, and I may have to just replace the photo because I've gotten a recent photo a few days ago. And by the time I look at this and look at the other one, it's like, wow, it's, you know, the growth and the energy. So that's why we keep on updating stuff. So we're showing people that was the land. There was nothing on there now. When you do the, the aerial view of the, the land itself, you'll see the markings from when we had the, the, the guys that was doing the bulldozers to, to clear out the road and cut around each lot and things like that. They didn't do a perfect job and they hit some of our, our markers and everything, but you can clearly see where the roads are and where the plots are. And then right here, we just have a blank version of the survey, 15 acres and 60 acres. So you're telling people, these are how these documents look. Make sure people show you these things and show you a whole lot more after that before you do anything with them. This is my personal encouragement to look out for my brothers and sisters because this tired of us going to Africa and our people shaking us down for certain things instead of this, you know, and the thing of it is, I'm not here to just blame our people and I'm definitely not here to blame the victim either. Uh, but uh, just you know, letting people know that these are the real situation that goes on, you know, and things like that. Uh, so here I am also now switching from the brochure now I'm on Instagram. Um, and while I'm on Instagram, I put some of these short clips. They were more of a teaser for the full length 24-minute um, video that we have with the land as we introduce the, the first uh, people that are living on the land, the people that are the, the builder that are, is building one of the homes, and also uh, the, our staff members there on the land. So that's our Instagram uh, documentation and show some of these other files and show our groups there in Ghana, show the, the drone footage of the over, you know, of the aerial view and everything. So as you see, these are the same two homes and you're seeing it basically just go up from the ground up in so many different pictures.
Another thing that I have is the um, Facebook public group page. And that is facebook.com forward slash groups, Black Star Pan-African Community. And what I did, I sent out uh, moving to Ghana a newsletter. So all these links and everything is on the newsletter. We spend most of the time going through the newsletter. So we just wanted to go through some of the other stuff um, that because it, it, it'll take forever just to go through everything that we have. So in this, uh, in this group, what I've done with the Facebook groups is because what, when, you, when you create groups, unfortunately, what people feel is they feel like they have more important things to share than the, the mission of the group and things. So people be sharing 100% irrelevant stuff. So I've blocked, I've made it to where no one can make any posts on any of my social pages on Facebook. Uh, they're just for information only. If somebody want to make a comment below the post, then you know, that, that comment will go through because I want, when I show these posts, and individuals that are interested in it, when they go to the page, they see the posts and not junk or garbage. So even with our Black Star uh, Pan-African Community group page on WhatsApp, I've repeated myself for a whole straight years, but finally I think we, you know, we're getting it to where people are not posting. And then whenever you go back on a page, even if it's a week later, whatever important message that I post or update, you can scroll up a little bit and you'll be able to see everything. But before it was just not like that. So. Just always want to let people know why we do this and we just, you know, it's not trying to be a dictator to nobody or trying to do anything. It's trying to run a professional organized business to where you don't have people trolling your page or people just posting whatever and things like that. It just doesn't make you look serious. And I'm trying to get more serious people in our group. And I'm spending a lot of time on the phone, you meeting people, building relationship and connecting with them and showing them everything that you have because we ultimately need the help to build all of this land and things like that. And, you know, if we don't take things serious or act like we're serious, people are not gonna take us serious. Uh, so that's why I've made sure that anything that I put up on online or anytime I'm just carrying myself, we try to carry ourselves in the most professional way and as possible and just keep away from negative energy and drama. And, you know, cause I've did my research over and over and it's like, you just, you post a bunch of positive video and you just post one negative video. And then you're like, okay, so that's what you, that's what the YouTube algorithm is doing. And that's what people are really pushing us to this more negative stuff and things like that. Like I tend to get more feedback when I, you know, when someone's coming at me and then I retaliate after them, you know, which I'm not doing anymore. I'm basically telling people if they want to say anything about me publicly, say it, have a good time. I hope that makes you richer and everything. And then I was asking the people out there to do critical thinking. Like, why would people do these things and things like that? Or do, are they, or do they have a point? Are they trying to tell you something or do, do they just not want to see us progress or is it just for their own selfish views? Because these are the things that we have to be doing. We have to be building a future in Africa. You know, we have to think about our children. Who, who are they gonna be working for if we're not building these factories and these corporations? And we're limited to what we can build in America because last I remember every time we kind of build something real black power and strong, it gets burned down or mysterious things happen. And we have had so many different examples especially in the 1900 you know the last century uh, and see these things so the safest place for us to build these things that we want to build is, is africa we just have to spend time to learn the culture connect with our own people and everything all right another thing that i have up here is the youtube playlist so once you're on our youtube channel you just scroll down to black star pan african community and you'll see 112 videos and those 112 videos go from september 2019 consistently almost every month all the way to I think it was last month was the last video was posted or even earlier this month yeah a few days ago and that's uh, the main video that I have up now uh, which is you know a 23 minute and 46 23 uh, minutes and 46 second video right and it has some of the you know, some of the little teasers that we put out before, even some of the drone footage and, and things like that. And it's a well-developed um, video uh, done by, by my brother, uh, name is uh, Taz TV. Uh, he is, you know, Taz is a, live across uh, from our, our actual office. And he's also a Jamaican brother that, uh, you know, he's been here in America and he also been to, you know, lived in uh, the UK. So these are people that I like to connect with. I like to connect with international people who understand these things and understand what we're working with. So. My goal is always to make a deal so we can all work together. So that's what we've been able to do 
uh, and we're just bringing more and more people on. So even though I'm not physically there, we have someone there that's doing the documentation. And then Brother Zebo is learning from Taz and learning from myself to build his own channel and, he's, and, and things like that. So we have more and more information up. And it's just a lot of videos and the videos covers uh, beyond us the updates on the land. It covers conference calls and it covers this certain uh, preparation of getting people open uh, to what we're doing in Africa. So those are the things that I uh, have uh, set up. And uh, the last thing was that the newsletter that I sent out the information and, and that I honestly don't change much in the newsletter. It's just a standard setup. And whenever I do have certain things, we'll just change it. And I'm just gonna scroll through it and see if there's anything that we left out and then show everybody where all the links are. So I was making sure that the main thing is that the conference call details is right there because for some reason we send links, people don't always open it. I don't know why, but the information that shows up is just, it's going to tell you that there's a conference call and it's for Black Star community. And it's just going to have, you know, the date and everything. And, but you have to click on it to get the details and to make it painless, you know, I put it right there at the top. So anyone could see it right away. Now, also in this newsletter, you're going to see some of the same documents that uh, you see on the Instagram page and also um, Facebook page and from the uh, email itself. And that's the incorporation. And what I'm doing is scrolling down because these are the same like images and documents. Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, we're talking about the committees. So this is the uh, list of 10 committees, business and professional affairs, safety, security, and surveillance, education, cultural, and social affairs, sustainable energy and utilities, medical and wellness, planning and development, maintenance and landscaping, waste management and recycling, agriculture and livestock, bylaws and homeowners affairs. So those are the 10 groups that we have. And it all just give you a nice little introduction about, you know, about the, the group itself. Right, this is the video that uh, we did. It was, it was one of the videos that was the same day we were commissioning the land. Uh, so once you pay for the land, you have all your legal paperwork. The next thing for the chief to do is to do, um, you know, do one of those blood sacrifice ceremony. And I do have that on the uh, Black Star page. It's not something that everybody is gonna be open to watching because I'm not sure how people feel about someone cutting the throat of a, you know, of a, you know, of a ram or a goat um, and the blood spilling everywhere. And I mean, I don't know, it just, I've had that, I've had the image of that blocked on Facebook because they say it was something grueling or something, but it's a part of their, tradition and culture once you pay them their money and you, you're in land build, deal with them that that ceremony certified everything is good and that you can build on the house so unfortunately i told a few people that they need to wait and just be patient with us because just because they paid money for the land they can't build on it but and just because they have the survey and illegal paper they still can't build on it because they have these are things that have to be done they they feel like if you don't bless the land and do certain things you, you know, and, you know, I'm not saying that I agree or believe everything, but you know, I'm also open and I'm, you know, you know, I'm learning the culture, but I told the chief that, you know, we're, you know, we're here to you know, connect with you and the culture. So we're fine with what you have to do and we're here to learn and he appreciate that and things like that. And, but he was also making sure that it wasn't going to you know, scare us or you know, freak us out. And as, as I mentioned, on this long newsletter, one of the biggest thing I have is just a lot of links. And All right, so I'll even give you links to our, the tour schedule we have coming up. I, I missed something here. Right. And I'm at this part where I talk about um, if this, this, this is just us right there at my brother Kamau house. And it's, you know, it's, this is December and the, you know, the progress is, is up there. And, and then Kim house is on the left and hers is the same thing too. So we've seen these things grow. 
So this is my direct information I have right there. And what I'm talking about in this post right here is, uh, excuse me, that this post above is consultation that we're offering people so we can just connect and, or just conversation because the main thing is just a call so we can talk. There needs to be consultation set up and things like that and we can do that, but just to communicate so, you know, we can, talk about uh, what's really going on in Africa and is it you know is it a safe for you just to get up and go or is it you know is it does it make sense for you just to get up and go and just do your own thing or like people quote unquote tell me that I'm going to Africa to live with the people so I guess I, and I tell them all the time I was like I guess I'm not your people then because you don't want to come live with me but you know and I was like I'm gonna be in Ghana with my business partners all my Ghanaian friends and we're going to be there doing business and living on the land and I was like it's but it's but at the same time too I have to deal with the reality of what we deal with um enough of us have gone and have destroyed the hard work and life that we built for ourselves. And next, you know, we sell our homes and we give up certain things and we show up in the country and next, you know, a bunch of things go wrong because we're thinking that the people that we're going to meet are going to just, you know, just be there and just, you know, be all righteous with you. And it doesn't work like that. People are going to look at you as a walking dollar bill. So you need leverage and things like that. And leverage is this community leverages communicating and dealing with your own brothers and sisters there. And that's like the biggest thing that I would tell people who wanna make these moves um, because some people have left our group and they felt like, well, I'm just gonna go live in this general community. But at the same time too, we have a lot of incentives and things like that that we have set up. And I can say that if they move somewhere else in a, in a general community with, you know, with mainly the Scanians and other people, cause you have other people that live in these communities. I don't know how a situation is going to work, but I'm telling people once we're all there set up and everything, if someone has an emergency and they have to get back to America and everything with us, you know, and if even the money is tight, you know, we'll put the money together because the goal is to, you know, build our own credit union and build all those things to where uh, something may happen and somebody may need to go. And we don't know the cost of what tickets may be and things out of the world may be, may be. So we'll take care of them and look out for them on that end. And also their family that's there will make sure that their family is good and things like that and that's how our real community operate trying to get back to how we used to operate you know um in our previous generations and operate this historically as a people you know uh, it seemed like we've lost our ways over the last few decades and things but i don't think all of it is lost i just feel like we just really need to just refocus on why we're doing what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing literally is to build a future for our children and put ourselves in a place where the people that are here in, in America or anywhere in the diaspora that feels that they're ready to take on a new challenge or ready to just do something else with their life or feel like they have spent so much time in this one location in the world and now they want to dedicate the rest of their life to do some positive stuff and things like that. And that's how we can all connect. So that is the Black Star Pan-African community. And let me uh, stop the uh, screen sharing. And uh, appreciate everyone family for listen to a presentation and everything and hopefully some people have any some people have questions and hopefully others may just want to dialogue about certain things but the call is literally open and hopefully everything was literally clearer everyone so family just um just click on unmute and then just do a quick introduction and ask your question in reference uh to what we got going on And if nothing, then I'll just have to ask some of our current members to share what's on their mind. Hey, Bomani, you said that um, you got few plots that's available in phase one. Uh, Which... Yes, uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's about three plots. Okay, three plots. Which, which ones? That is a good question. I can pull up the spreadsheet. So sometimes I say, if I don't type and update these things. So one is available. One was never, one was available. And uh, what is this, 16 and 27. 16 and 27, okay. Uh, one, 16 and 27. Okay. I think I might want 16, cause I'm, I'm 17. I think I'm 17. I'm yeah, just saying. yeah, you're 17. I just, yeah, it's out there. just realize you're right there. Um, by so perfect, you know, I could just always talk about that and things that's never a problem. Um, okay, um, things like that. And I'm um, I've sent out the information to a few people, but I'm always telling them that you know, that 
you know, these things don't last long. So no, uh -uh, especially one next to me. My niece bought the other one, the other side of me. So yeah. Uh, let me look back at that. <laughs> For some reason, it flows like that. <laughs> I just real, I just realized that. I literally just realized that. Mm -hmm. that uh, you and her right there. So that's always good. Because uh, we did. That's always good. And one point, a few people had a chance to move around. And I think everybody feels good about their location. Mm -hmm. So when you go, our goal is just to get you to that spot and just show you where everything is at and everything. And and the next thing after that is the surveyor. So I'm going to put a little fire under the surveyor and try to motivate him because he has some surveys for me that's still not done from last year. And, and I'm telling last you. Last year? Yeah, it's, I know it's sad to say it's, it, it is. Uh, it's, and I'm trying to be a better version of myself and trying to communicate and deal with people a little better. But mm -hmm. we're in a situation where, you know, we're at his mercy. And right. The only yeah. one that really knows that land and everything. And but our, my, my goal was to literally try to get us another surveyor to work with him. That way mm -hmm. they can work in partnership uh, to make sure he keeps his, because he's, you know, because he's really good at what he does. And the ultimate leverage that uh, he has that I like to work with him on is his boss is the person that's his, his former boss is the land commission director so you know, oh, we, wow. you know we can get okay. some stuff done so i just got to get him off from running okay. our cry and doing some work and get him to go pick up our surveys so he can start the new ones and and things like that and get him to uh pay one of his guys to go to the 60 acres and get me a gps uh coordinate because i got people coming and you know, someone may show you some land, but there's no way we can go back into that neighborhood and find that exact land, even though we know it's by the Rafiki uh, orphanage. But mm -hmm. it's like the land, the next set of land is basically on the next street over a street that hasn't really been paved, like it haven't really been built yet. So that was good because okay. since that street okay. wasn't there, I was able to get the chief to negotiate for the same price. Other than that, you know, he's going to try to up the price. Mm -hmm. So that okay. was a good situation. Okay, good. I, I'll start purchasing that land soon. Hopefully nobody gets it before me. <laughs> no, I mean, all you have to do is this, you know, all you have, all you have to do is this, uh, I mean, you're letting me know now, so I mean, it's on. Yes, it's, I it's want it. On hold. So I'm just putting it on hold, so I just usually put this, okay. your name and put it in red, and, and that's how okay, I keep Thank it. you. Thank you very much. And then I got all the surveys that's been done and the one that needs to be done in different colors. This one of those coordination that you have to keep up with because somebody got to keep records because sometimes you don't know if your people there in Ghana keeping records like the survey had to ask me to send them some information I was like brother you're not busy you're not a serious businessman you got to keep up with all these people paperwork he's not he's depending on you to do it yeah and that's why I just run our administration here and keep a record of everything so if anybody even need a copy of their deed or anything or their paperwork it's all here and all set up and uh, and also in the, the email system. But even if we get the survey, uh, we still have to wait for the chief to uh, to butcher a goat or something, right? Oh no, that was on the 15 acres. He may, he may have to do. That oh, on the okay, okay. It, it was a, it was a, it was a one time it was a one time thing. I, I mean, I don't want to see that thing again. Maybe okay. For the next land, but I, I, we couldn't do that okay. for every plot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. But it's just give us the opportunity to save more money, you know, so that's how I look at it. Okay, so thank you very much. Well, appreciate it. And we, I'll be seeing you in Ghana with our group. Um, and I'm still recruiting people to come to Ghana. So if anybody want to join on the last minute, you, you have up until the 24th to get on the trip of uh, May. Just, you know, you can just show up at the airport. Good morning. How you doing? Uh, greetings, greetings. So Todd from Amy. Uh, excellent presentation. Appreciate uh, you. Love it. I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is, what happens to the land after 99 years? And um, with regard to building a house, can you uh, acquire a mortgage or you have to uh, do everything with uh, payments within a certain time period? And then finally, with regard to the roads, do you have a road contractor or that's something that has to be vetted? Uh, let me talk about the road uh, first. Uh, we have a few people that have given us quotes. Uh, the community that our office is in, we're using some of their people, and I'm using that as leverage, is using some of their people to do certain things and build a, build a relationship. So they have given us quote, but we have to figure out how we're going to come up with the money and things like that, because what people have got purchased is land. 
So once they purchase the land, it's up to them to, to you know, to kind of build everything. And, and it's up to us as a community to figure out how we're going to do roads or community and business centers. So we, in the U.S., I'm telling individuals, let's use the access of what we have here and things like that. And that's what I'm trying to do, a few things that I can't say on the recording. Um, and it's nothing illegal. It's just you know, trying to find different ways to grant money and things like that. But uh, I don't want to just tell people all the things that we're doing. But that's what we're going to do to get the, the roads done and things like that. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned about the billing of the homes. Uh, so what you do is uh, you're making payments to the builder. So what I usually recommend is that you pay the builder for the foundation, you pay them for walls up, you pay them for roof, you pay them for, you just like paid in stages and things that, and make sure that you're completely satisfied with the work that you have done. And what I'm looking to do also is to have some of our people operate as managers to where they'll come on the land and they'll just check, check out your project. Like if you're in America and you're trying to get your, your community, get your, you know, get your home built and you just need someone to just go and check on things on a regular basis and things that we'll be able to do that because yes it's you know it's ideal if you just dare in ghana but some of us i tell people i was like i can't move to africa i'm i'm i'm, I'm here in america working every day and you know and the work and things that i do i'm not going to be there be able to do it effectively there in ghana because most of what i need to do is be on the phones with people with the u.s numbers and call them directly throughout the day and things like that uh, so the other question that you had was about the 99 year lease. Oh, let me make sure I answer this question completely right. So you can get a mortgage and you can get your money from wherever, but you don't have to pay the builders or anybody all the money up front. And then once your home is built, that's yours. The most I'll say that they may get us a property taxes pay probably about 20 to $30. And so far, the property tax people haven't come around, but they will be around soon once they start seeing things go up. Uh, and then uh, as far as the 99 year lease, the best thing I can say about that is I'm hoping that our children figure it out because we're trying to do as much as we can do in this generation and things like that. Because you're looking at almost a hundred years from now and you're saying, are we really gonna be calling ourselves all these things, Jamaicans, um, Americans, this you know, group, uh, Ghanaians and so on. And you're hoping that we figure it out and really build the real Pan-Africanism that we've been talking about. And, and all of us can be African nationals or whatever we call our continent and things that and have a valid passport to go everywhere on the continent without having to pay, do what I did and in, in pay a visa for Ghana, pay a visa for Togo, pay a visa for Benin. I literally couldn't do that too long. So I had to cut that journey, but that's, that's a frustration that limits us from moving. And it's not that we don't have $160 to pay a visa for one country and then pay another 160. It's just the point of it. It makes no sense. And it's just, it doesn't encourage people. That's to, so you're hoping that we can figure these things out. So, in our generation, we're trying to do our part on building the foundation as best as possible and get some of our people in the diplomatic connection area to where we, in this generation where the goal is even for us to get, get all of our group members citizenship on a private deal because you, know, you, could, you can only do so much with visas and also you can only do so much even when you have residency because you still have to renew a residency you know, and things like that. Uh, so we're hoping that we can not hoping that our goal is to put all of our people, our children, our people in place to get it done. Because by the time you we're building that community, and I'm sure it's, it's going to be a few single brothers that's going to be showing up on the property and building their homes. And then you know, I'm sure they're going to meet them a nice, beautiful Ghanaian empress that they're going to fall in love with. And they're going to have they're going to have children. And what are we going to call our children? Are we going to call our children half American, half Ghanaian and stuff like that? And, you know, and then another generation go after that, are we going to say, hey, he, you know, his father was here. You know, it's like, you know, you're hoping that we can fix these things. And that's the best thing I have. And beyond that, beyond us hoping, you're putting the right things in place to make sure these things happen by educating a town full of people to be your representation, especially when some of them go up in government, you know, because that could, that could be a student right now, but that could be the next president of Ghana and he could be the next MP of the town and everything. So that's why we're using the student movement and the, the social energy that we have there as a way to just build relationship. That way we can set it up for the future where we can all just be one nation of African people one day. Excellent. Excellent. So I hope I answered all three of your questions clearly. Yes, sir, great. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you doing a wonderful job. It's a very exciting, inspiring. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. It's. Uh, it's, it's been, yeah, been ex exciting in this. We've been able to survive all the challenges from day one. That's the amazing thing about it, because it's- yeah.
it's not easy getting up saying you're going to do international business and you, you know, you're around and then a decade and a half passed by and you're still relevant. Right. Absolutely. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, greetings, brother. Hey, thanks for that presentation. It's a lot more clear to me now. We will be uh, chatting later on this week. I'm going to have to really? run. I got <laughs> I to I jump on another call real quick. But we will be chatting a little bit later on this week. If not tomorrow, I'm, I'll be out your way tomorrow. Absolutely, brother. Well, uh, definitely appreciate you joining and everything. And you, you and I always talk anyway and everything. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to hanging out with you in Tanzania and taking you out on a boat with everybody else. <laughs> And, and I'm looking forward. I'm trying to get Tamari to go. He he on the fence a little bit. <laughs> well, the, well, the good thing is, uh, you know, we have you know, we have lots of schedules, and we have you know we have time. One journey don't work, another journey will work, and right. one year don't work, another year will work. So I'm very patient with hey, communicating with people. Send, send them that video you sent me, Bomani. I bet you get a deposit tomorrow. I'm trying to remember what video I sent you. <laughs> the, one, the, the 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 uh the uh. Excursion at the end of your uh, Tanzania trip, the last one you did, you sent out. Oh yeah, that, them videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my brother, uh, oh, yeah, I'll catch up with you a little later. All right, Tamari, glad you was able to join. We'll catch up. Absolutely, brother, and take care. All right, all right, peace, peace. All right, uh, brother Kamal, would you like to share any updates on your? your home that we were looking at uh, and want to let everybody know that uh, this is our good brother come out and that is is a roundhouse uh, built with ram earth technology yeah so um yeah i've been seeing the video that you guys have been doing with the aerial view all right you like I've it i've been sharing it with some people here so they, they love it and um but the world said a lot of people been coming coming there and they 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 loving the house and they, they they would they want it you know I said don't you give away my house to anybody <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's coming along good and it looks it looks real good it's real good yeah so, I was shocked when I went there and I was like wow you already saw a building so yeah. I'm telling people there it goes I'm telling people just you know you, I've known you for I want to say we, we traveled together in 2011 yeah and um you know you know. And we just been we've been connecting and, and telling people that that's the reality. You know, we, you know, you connect with people and then you, you you know you're, you know, you're showing everyone what you're doing and you know you just came through and I'm just appreciated because I know we were talking about this for like ten years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell people it's so hard to get any of this stuff done. But the motivation was Garvey Town. I mean, because I was like, man, we were so close, yeah. and I was like, I can't give up. Right, we got to figure this thing out, you know, and things like that because they would they would have issue with you building that house. Kim building our house and Lennon and Carmen building their house because they wanted to sell us bungalows. Yeah. And that's where I was trying to get people to understand that, you know, you know, it's like, this is, if this is my dream, I want to build my dream house. Yeah. Like I haven't figured out what my dream house is going to look like, but I don't need, you know, I don't need, you know, and another, another man tell me I can't build my home and things like that and, and try to just have some control. So we, so that's one thing I love about what we've been able to all agree on is just to not have these restrictions. Yeah. Uh, can you expound that that uh, roundhouse technology, the special brick, or can you yeah, expound so on that? Earth, so it's um it's compressed earth put together. It's not even earth blocks. It's compressed earth put together, and it makes the uh, you know it makes the home a lot cooler. That's one of the things right. I'm always hearing. I haven't been in their home yet, uh, but the, I'm always hearing about how cool it is, and everyone has mentioned that. Uh, so it's one of the more popular build because you know how it is in Africa, and you turn around, it's like 99 degrees. And things like that so and some people may not exactly like the air conditioned world me i'm fine with a ceiling fan and things like that but you know here in the south it does get hot so you turn on your ac but then this is all one of those hot uh you know brick house gotcha okay i'm in love with your round house <laughs> so much so that i contact the builder <laughs> That's how it work. I'm telling people, show your work, show your work. I've been telling, I told the other builder that I said, I was like, bro, I was like, don't you have any pictures or videos? I just want to share it with the group because they just need to see what you guys are doing so they can really believe that this is really happening. Yes. And especially when they put the roof on. Yeah. Oh, I was in love, first sight. <laughs> okay. But I told them I want 
I, okay, so don't get mad if I get a round house, but mine is going to be a lot smaller than yours. Okay. I don't want all that room, but just a small round yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. I won't get mad. <laughs> I'm okay. <glad>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put any pictures up right quick? Since we're talking about this house. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, let me. That's the thing about it. They did more videos than anything else. I'm all of a sudden, I need pictures also. I got to get it on Instagram. So let me just, I think the quickest thing I could pull up is uh, Instagram. Or but Manny, no, uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, go ahead. Um, it is Saida. Yes, the brother with the round house. Yes. That is very impressive. My question. Is um is that a two-story home or is it one story? Uh, the reason I'm asking because I may come to you too. <laughs> you're breaking up, so I didn't I didn't uh yes, you're breaking up. It, okay, yes, my apologies. Um, if it's a one or two story. Oh it's one story. One story. It's got okay. a very high roof. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm interested in a two-story. Okay. But I really like that run house so i made copy okay <laughs> that's fine <laughs> <laughs> all right so let me check thank you and when you're talking i'm uh looking at our facebook page because on facebook uh the group page what i have is in media i have the last album that we did in ghana uh so let me scroll to his house what you're gonna see because these are all december unfortunately and I'll, I'll put up another picture real quick. All right, there we go. Uh, well, these are all pictures in the stages of being built. So let me at least show you that. And I'm always happy that we get a chance to do this because a lot of times you see the finished product, but you don't see like, like you know, this is the technology that they're using to stuff the earth and things like that. It's, I watched them for a little bit, but you know, I had to keep moving. So just, uh, just try to just go back on videos. This is all of uh, for the Kamal's uh, plot. All right. And now let me show you something more of a finished product. All right, so that's what, so that's the situation it's in. Let me stop this thing real quick. It is in, let me see the last picture the brother sent me. That's some always time I need pictures, need pictures, but let me just see if I can get this video played. All right. I'm going to share this video and all right. All right, uh, share. Let me know if you can see the video. Not yet. All right, so this is one of those tricky things here. All right, I found it right here. There we go, perfect. All right, so there we go. Uh, just had to get it off of WhatsApp and make it work. So these are the homes close to each other. That's the most updated uh, documentation I got and I received this a few days ago. I haven't even seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> Azibo sent it to me because I was like, I was like, brother, I need some pictures. I need some pictures. I was like, we got it. I was like, we got, I was like, we just need to just keep pushing our information out there. I was like, you know, okay. people are going to come. And uh, so all of this is helping, but uh, this is probably the most accurate view of your home right now. So, so these are two homes side by side. One is brick and one is a ram earth. So those are the two 
popular methods and those are the two represent two builders but everybody's more just impressed with the, the home that you built and then Leonard and Carmen because they always hear about how cool it is and like the brick house over here they better have a whole lot of uh, AC yeah but because that concrete is going to hold heat go ahead is that a metal roof yeah okay and what's the square footage Oh, uh, uh, you know, I forgot I wrote it down and I forgot. <laughs> but the land itself um, is uh, 80 by 100 and it may when it make once they um, because some of it has to be compensated for streets. So you end up probably having about closer to 7,500 square foot of land to build around. And I'm trying to estimate what your, your square foot may be, but I, I don't want to sound too off. So. But uh, the good thing about it, it's the home fit perfectly in that um, 7,500 square foot of um, a land. So letting everybody know, you know, the, the land is big enough for you to build what you need to build. Like most of the homes that uh, we have here in this uh, county, um, you don't have a lot of land space. As a matter of fact, these, these lots are bigger than most of the, the lots here. I think some of the, on average, the lots here are about 0.20 of an acres. And the house that I have, uh, first house that I had, was 0.14 and things like that. So the good thing is you can plant some good stuff in your front yard, your backyard. So if everybody plants a few veggies and then a few uh, fruit trees, we can have an incredible, beautiful, you know, set up to where we can just, you know, live, live off the land for, you know, live off the land on some aspect and things like that. And then, you know, for those who want to go fishing, the beach is not too far. But uh, well, what about utilities? Um electrical grid or how is that going to be set up oh no there's no there's no electricity nowhere close by um and if you want electricity you have to bring it in so the best thing that we have is to make the whole project sustainable and uh, so everyone is responsible to basically purchase their own sustainable um power package whether it's a solar you know solar energy or whether they're using wind power or any other form of uh power to you know, to power their house and then you can have a catch water system or you can do the tank and things like that, uh, or you can do borehole systems. So those are the three methods of, you know, the most important thing is, which is water and, you know, water and power. And as far as the internet, the only thing I can tell people is good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I have to talk. Oh, no. like I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do business. There. I couldn't, people ask some people, I've had people ask me, if I'm going to live in a house and, and across the street from my community, I tell them no. I was like, I was like, unless I bring my own technology there, as far as my own internet source and my own power source and I own everything, then you're good because I'm one of the people that's you know you operating consistently every day, mm -hmm. and that's why you don't want to be on nobody's uh, power grid because there you can be paying for power and then you 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 know you out of power you know maybe it may go off for a few hours. It's just inconsistency. The same thing with water and things like that. And I've been through those situations, well, not really, because I usually make sure I go to a hotel that have backup power and, and things like that, and make sure that um, I don't stay at nobody's house that don't have certain things. But uh, that's the main thing that we have to do. So in the sustainable world, we'll be able to take care of our power and water by building our own system. So with your own water system, you can treat your own water system and have the most purified water that you can get and things like that because it's coming straight from you know from the rain and then you channel it into a and basically um an underground tank or a tank on the side and then you're building in a pump and filter system and these are one of the videos that i have on our on our on our youtube uh, page for black star uh, i did an interview with uh one of uh, my good friends that you know that he, you know he opened it up to where i can go to his house and then meet one of his uh, builders and he explained the whole process of the catch water system that they built because we were looking for contractors who can do these things. Uh, so, you know, he explained, I mean, it was a beautiful system. You know, I mean, the whole pump and filter system and he just showed me how the, the whole system operate, but basically it gives you a level of six months of unlimited water or six months to a year, it depends how big the tank is and things like that. So people ask me, what about, what if it doesn't rain for a year? I was like, you know, well, we probably don't. They, I was like, well, the world must be coming to an end because you're just talking about countries like Ghana, Liberia. That's all they do is that's all it does is rains there. So you, that's why the country is so fertile and things like that. So you're telling people to take, you know, the creator made it rain for more than just one reason. You know? 
and it's a good source of water. So we can help anyone with that and I can always connect them to the contractors if they choose to use them and they can also come up with their own method. But right now, the builder is the main person that's gonna help you with everything there on the property. And then the survey is gonna help you with other things like uh, any legal documentation, like surveys and things like that. Okay, um, Bomani, is that their, their home? This is on one or two lots? Oh no, th those, those are two separate homes. That's plot number 28 and 29. But each of them is one lot? Each? Oh yeah, each, each, each of them is one lot. Oh, wow. Okay. I was thinking it was too It was kind of weird. And, and I'm trying to get the brother to like angle things a little better. Cause if you went around the other angle, you could have seen both homes a lot clearer, but when you look at it, it looked like they're both connected to each other, even though they're close. Yeah. I, I didn't realize the lots was that large. So I thought that each of them had two lots. Oh, you know, okay. So, okay. Yeah. They're, they're large. Lots. Even when I was looking at the aerial view, I was like, the land is that big. I was like, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. but the good thing is that more land more you know more ways to plant the food that we need you know, exactly. you know plant your mango tree and a guava tree and aki tree and plant you all those things and we're going to really push the elements of planting because we have to get back from eating from the trees and eating from the ground and I agree. and then having more of our own purified water and things like that because you know, sitting around this painful bottle water painful poisonous bottle water is not always the ideal thing to do so from your water machine and you put in your your catch water into your water machine which is ideal you know some people have these incredible like you know machines um well i'm trying to remember the, the machine that does these unique water alkaline water there you go these people are, yeah the, so for those who have the alkaline machine you bring it there and it's filled up with rain water and you're good and then that's your drinking water and uh and then the rest of the water you know you you know, it's for basically this washing and showering in and things like that. So by the time the, the filter system filter all that stuff out, the water is still better than, than this chlorine filled water that we have here in this county that you're overpaying for. So we'll be able to have no utility bills and, um, and no mortgages or anything. And the only thing that we have to worry about is internet. So well, you know, so there's a few different technology. Now these guys at SpaceX talking about, they're gonna make sure that everybody can access internet around you know, in the world. But the, the ideal thing for us to do is to use uh, satellite technology to set up our own infrastructure for internet and, and you know, kind of mount it and set it up around the business center. But these are things that we have in our mind because the technology is out there and every day goes by, you have more and more technology coming out. Excellent. Appreciate you, brothers. Uh, appreciate you, Todd. Uh, let me see who else. Um, uh, we have one of our newest members. I want to see if he can at least uh, say something. Uh, Steve, uh, are you open to this uh, introducing yourself and just you know, say a greetings to us, uh, especially some of the other members in our group that haven't met you yet? There we go. Uh, yeah, just. Um... Just listening on what's uh, what's going on uh, as, as usual. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, Excellent. Now, do a, if you can just do a proper introduction with your name and everything, and uh, where you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And, sure. sure. And okay. Why yeah. you want to socialize with people like us and and yeah, um, building? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, my name is uh, Steve Madison. Um. I um. I live in uh, Toronto. Uh, actually, Ajax, uh, Ontario, which is close to Toronto. Um, originally uh, born in Jamaica and uh, spent my, most of my life uh, living here in Canada. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's uh, in the last five years or so, like I've been really um, having this vision of going back to Africa, you know, and, and, uh, and building and, you know, and cre creating some freedom, man, and, uh, you know, creating generational, generational wealth for, uh, you know, for the kids and the grandkids, right? So, um, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Yeah, I'm... Um, I'm uh, an electrician by trade, um, um, and um, I you know, don't know too much to say, but just to say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, really gravitate, gravitating towards uh, the idea of um, um, I'm building this community and um, having a sustainable living, and um, I think this is the way for, for us as a people in the future, man, and, um, you know, like, we get like minds together and, uh, and, 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 and give this thing a go, it's, it's, it's going to work for everybody, man, and, and um, and it's, it's going to be good for us. And I'm excited to, you know, to be a part of it. 
Yeah, excellent. And if you can just even share with people how you even came into this connecting with us on this project. Well, um, I just, um, you know, like 2019, I started getting, starting to do a little bit more YouTubing, right? And um, I just uh, been kind of been following Brother Bamani uh, with his, uh, at least it was a travel tourist to begin with. And then, um, and then uh, I saw him uh, um, come up with a Black Star um, Pan African um, community, right? And um, it caught my attention. And um, I've been just, um, from then, I just been just basically just following and, and, and you know, just uh, seeing the progression of how everything's been going on. And uh, I've, I've seen, I've seen the progression so far. Like, I mean, it's still, we still got a lot of work to do, but I, I've seen, you know, I've seen progression being made along the way. And um, like I said, man, I'm, it's, it's uh, kind of excited about this thing. And um, it's, it's, I believe it's definitely going to work, you know, it's going to take some work, but it's, it's going to be good for everybody. Well, well, that's perfect. Well, appreciate you, brother, and checking things out. And that's why I'm always telling anybody to check things out and, you know, the, that people show you their track record and show you their, their growth and their progress. And so, and that's what we're looking to do because we let people know that that's, this is just where we have to start. And we can, and as time go along and we get more people and get more people that can do certain things, you know, a lot more will get done. Uh, especially since we've been getting all these videos out and things uh, like our brother um, Kamal was saying about uh, Welbeck because Welbeck was in that interview. And, you know, he has people coming to take a look at the homes that he's building and all kinds of things. And so, you know, after a while, these things change because it's not like it's a whole bunch of people that's offering the same program. Uh, you have uh, you have a Sable out there in Cape Coast. You have migrating culture out there in the Eastern region. And that's honestly all I know of. And then we're basically in paradise because we're right there in the middle of between Accra and Cape Coast. Uh, and we're right there by a nice beach area, beach environment. And that's our advantage over everyone else. And then we're in a town that's very dis... It's not popular. It's not one of those popular named towns. It's a very small town. And, you know, but I believe in a small town philosophy, just like when I came from, uh, you know, when I came, left Virginia and came down here to build my career, just didn't, didn't want to live in no, no, no Atlanta, nowhere. And then just I saw that the, the Southern counties are, are ideal and no more laid back and things like that. So that's where we are with that uh, vision and things. So, so, so appreciate you honestly, brother, checking it out and you know connecting with us. And we definitely have to just make sure we get you to Ghana and we we'll just keep you posted with all of the things we have coming up. And then you know when you get to that point, and you're ready to talk to the builders and so on. Uh, we got your back. That's good to good to know, man. Good to know. Um, uh, just um, a quick question: is, is everybody in the panel right now? So has everybody um, purchased um, a, a, a plot so far? Or, or... Uh, no, this is a public group. So okay, okay, okay. But even if even it's it's a public group, so that's only that's one of the ways that I can get people to actually come on a call because sometimes our group members, some of them are so busy and tied up, uh, right. to where they don't make the calls. Uh, so I wanted right. to just make it to where the calls that we have, you know, we have, we're sharing it with other people and we're bringing in new energy. And then, because right now we're at a good point to share information because we have, you know, we've gotten a lot more accomplished over the period of time. And then, you know, and then, you know, it's two, year, two and a half years into the project. So, you know, you know, as you can see, we're there building, we have, we, we have no troubles in the town and things like that, uh, which is very important uh, because when you do this project, if something is not right going on, you're gonna have trouble with the people in the town and trouble with the town itself. Uh, so that's one thing I'm just happy to say because, oh man, dealing with land in Ghana and trying to get land and it being clean and it being everything being on point, it's like it's like hitting the lotto. And the, the other thing that we have in Ghana is like they're coming up with this registration system, but 95% of the land there is not registered in the country. So uh, we're dealing with a developing situation, which is good because we can grow with it and we can learn. Wow. All right, let me see who else we got here. So we have a few other people. I don't know if they, you want to say anything or introduce yourself, but be free to unmute yourself. Oh, just trying to make sure I reach out to our members. Uh, Philson, let me see if I can unmute you. If you're not at work and you can share a few things, that'll be good. And if hey, Greens, brother, how are you? Yeah, fine, thanks, man. Um, I got to be on the on the um the show. Um, it's a good thing, and uh, to get the updates on what's going on. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to go on that trip uh, to Ghana and to see the piece of land that I have, you know, and uh, and look at what progress I can make from from there. I am concerned about the registration. Well, not so much the registration, the um the legal um permits and things like that. Because from what I understand, and maybe you can clarify that, that uh, if you what legal um, national legal um, documents that you got to get before you can start doing the business of owning the land. I, I think it's, you didn't say much about that, but I think it's, um, you have to get something there. You, you the last thing is the last thing is the um, the registration, and then you can you can start issuing individual registration and things like that. I'm still trying to learn that whole process, but. The good thing is uh, once you have your survey, you can start building and then the chief and his people are there to greet you in the town and give you their blessing. And then they're gonna be dealing with the um, the bill and permit department because they have to work certain things out because if you don't work these things out, uh, people will take forever with your paperwork. So that's why I have the office there. That way when you're there and you're trying to get these things done, it could just all be done and we can just have people work on it. But um, the most important thing is that uh, survey. Okay, um, they, they, you know, I thought that um, that the government require you to have the residency or some kind of thing first before you can even start doing your um, registration and things like that. Uh, if that's not the case and, and they they slow on that or they just um, they're not too strict with it, that's, that's a good thing for us. The good the two things is they're definitely slow on all of these things, and then. Um, <laughs> And the other thing is um, things are not really being enforced and it takes time because once they put it in the system, like I just started hearing about this, like, like either this year or the end of last year, uh, because everything that I've done in Ghana, I've done it with a US passport and, and, things, that, and things like that. So all, you know, even I've had, I even have investment accounts in, there in Ghana, at UBA, like treasury bills and things like that. And I was able to do all those things with my US passport. Uh, last time I went back to get some of that money, they told me I can't, they, they're not going to give me access to my money because I don't have a residency permit. And they said, we know it's, we know who you are because you've been here before, but we are not allowed to give you your money until you show us that you're, you're a resident. Man, I thought it was joking. <laughs> they were dead serious. So I had to go call my attorney and that's the only reason I got some of my money. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, uh, and, and it's his fault also because you're supposed to get my residency done, but I, my goal is to get it, uh, get it taken care of on this turnaround uh, yeah. with some new people that we have working with us that can get it done real efficient. Mm. So. Yeah, I, I plan to open an account as well. Um, um, but if I don't get it done this year, you probably will, I suppose it comes to start billing and things like that. No, I they're mean, not gonna let you even open a bank account. They're not gonna let you get a mobile money account. None of those things. I even went to, to get a mobile money account one day and then she was like, the lady was like, where's your residency? And I was like, why do I need a residency? And she was like, that's a requirement now. And I was like, it wasn't last time I came here. She was like, that's what it is now. So a lot of things are changing in the country and I'm trying to keep up with the changes, but, um, but uh, it will limit you, the US passport will limit you, but you can still get some things done. Like you can, you know, like to get to your survey and all the other stuff we need to do, you can still get that done. As far as the final transfer of your deed and things like that uh, to individuals. Now they may come up with something that's saying that everyone needs to be a resident and things like that. Uh, so we'll work it out. But a good thing about it is I have a lot of Ghanaian partners. So the way I've gotten around certain things is, you know, you ask your partners to help you because, you know, we're, we're all in this together and, you know, and things like that. So the chief and the attorney has been very good with making sure that we have all the things that we need. Okay, that's good. Um, thing. I'm very excited about the community. I think it's going to be a success. I think it's um, just, I mean, it looks slow from the start, but um, I think it's going to be a success. And um, especially in, in future with um, our kids, and um, because it will take time to develop like roads and things like that but as you put down the houses and things things on just one the place and i'm looking i'm excited i'm looking forward to that absolutely and you see now the flow of our energy of our group has been it's very everything is very stable and cool and everything and we still have about 50 people and things like that but you're telling everyone that you know when you build on something you know it's you're not gonna have like all the perfect people to connect together and you get along and everything. You have to go through some growing pains. So I'm telling people that we have progressed and we have, you know, went through certain things and now we're just stable and things are going well. And uh, now we just, you know, we're consistently just showing the world what we're doing. I mean, people have never seen as much videos and photos as that where we've been pushing out on the project. 
And then we have a whole lot more, especially when I show up in Ghana a month from now. Yeah, I must talk, I must say, um, talk about your masterminding because um, there's a lot of people who put up doing this stuff in the kind of work um, or the document um, that you have. I can go on your site, see a bundle of things. I don't have to be scared. I've seen everything on paper. You know, I, I don't have to think about, oh, if I give him money, if I won't get this, if I won't get my receipt, it's all done. And I mean, it, and you, you, you document things so well that is hardly anything to question. And um, I really love that. And I think a lot of people will like the, the, like the way you, um, you're doing it. And it's a good, strong business attitude that you have. I think you're working. I do feel that you're overworking yourself, but it, it's- Absolutely, I need to, absolutely. <laughs> um, and and the, issue, the issue is that I, 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 there's, there's some people that I, that, had a, that I had around me and we were working together and I just felt like I was dragging them and it was just sucking my energy and things like that. So, but yeah. I, yeah, I'm trying to slow down, um, but it's 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 becoming too much, uh, especially uh, this you know, trying to get the office there going and and a few things. But so, but none of these things don't progress without you know without having to put these work in and make it work. So I'm trying to find um, I'm trying to get more people involved, honestly. Uh, but as far as administration, that's what I've dedicated to do to take care of all those things to make sure that things are good and making sure even if you show up in Ghana and I'm not there, you have people that can. Look out for you, whether you're in Accra, Kumasi, or there. That's one of the things that we have accomplished. We have, you know, and it takes you a while to know who's good people or not. So I tell people by now, after 15 years, the people who are still around us, they're the ones that survive because we had, we fired a lot of people have been fired. It's, it's it's unfortunate, but it's 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 either you get rid of the, the the bad apple or you let them destroy your business. And sometimes people don't always respect your business, so you try to hire people, you try to recruit people and make deals with them, bring them on as partners and all kind of stuff. And uh, so that's the good thing about it. We have the experience and the setup. So just appreciate people like yourself who are just committed to what we're doing. And one thing we have to always do is be transparent to our people. And, and I don't think that we have much of a choice because we're dealing with a country like Ghana. There's more negative videos about land in Ghana than anything else on YouTube. And it discourages people. Uh, but, and there's a lot of sad stories that didn't have to be sad, but it's the nature of what we're trying to educate people. Like, have your crew and have your crew available. Because I'm telling people, I'm not even there in the country. I'm always I'm here in my office working throughout the day. So, you're telling people you gotta have to have attorneys, consultants, you know, people that you trust with your life and trust with your money and trust. These are not just average people that you're dealing with. You have to spend time to build a long-term relationship with them. And that's what I feel like we have with the the three main people: our consultant, our chief, and also um, our attorney. Uh, so. You know, so that's trying to be that example to tell people, let's do this the right way. And don't think that, you know, you, you're going to just go to Ghana like that and people don't shake you down. I was like, it's what it is. And, it's, and I, I'm almost willing to say it's the same thing, whether they're in the Caribbean, uh, whether, you know, uh, whether they are just anywhere in Africa. And, you know, you're from Guyana, I'm from Jamaica, and we can talk about the crazy stuff that goes on in our countries. Exactly. <laughs> the, the of, the, and, and similar things to what goes on in Ghana. So I'm telling people, it's not that Ghanaian thing. Ghana is just one of the more popular countries with this corrupt black stuff going on. Yeah, exactly. Again, like um, yeah, Guyana, you get, I, I mean, I, I, you, I, just like Ghana, you got to be there to see things. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they do the same thing to you. So um, I am not worried about, well, okay, these things that you, I know as long as we, what, one of the good things that you, you're doing, and if you can develop a little bit more, that when, for us who are outside, and if we start to build, if, you know, we can have um, trust, you know, trustworthy people to help us um, watch the contractors to build. And I hope that, um, that you can look into that and see if we can really achieve that. So keep the well, good work, man. Oh, absolutely. We definitely have people available. I just have to, we definitely have people available. Like right now, even my brother in the office, he's one person, but yeah, that, that's the goal. Once we have more people and then if they say that they're not going to be there and you just need somebody to do that, we can do that. Like I have a Zebo and a few people, including our neighbors, going around there doing videos on a regular basis and checking things out. So those things definitely uh, help and trying to get some of the the, the, the youth from uh, the student movement to be there and just kind of moving around and you know, because the goal is to just show an active environment and, yeah. then, and, and having people consistently come in to visit and things like that, all that stuff makes a difference. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so keep the good work up, man. Well, appreciate you, brother. All right, family, before we close, anybody want to say anything? Sahida, you have anything you'd like to share as another member? 
Uh, would you like to reintroduce yourself and things like that? And she may have clicked off by accident. There you go. Um, I don't really have anything extra to share. I am excited, everyone. Um, I think I joined in December of last year. Yes, um, a great December. My home build in two years. Uh, December 2024. Yeah. No, 23. Something like that. Um, 24? <laughs> and, uh, no, because I already have my money for this year to build it. So next year is 2023, and I'll be working to have the rest of the money. So I guess we build 24 then, since I have all the money at the end of December 2023. Um, I don't think I can share other than that I'm building. And I think I'm going to copy that roundhouse, but I want two levels. And two floors, absolutely. I got you. Two floors. You want your own private balcony and everything on the top floor of your palace. <laughs> I don't know. It's two floors. Yeah, the two floors are ideal because the thing of it is it give you more land space. That's the thing I look at ideally. And then give you also a nice sort of view if you just want to put a rooftop access and you can just look out the town and look, you know, and things like that. Because where we are. The rooftop come in the area, I mean, the my the amount I want to spend, it'll be fine. But if not, I'm I'm I don't need all that extravagant stuff. I'm a layback lady. So perfect. So you want a nice simple floor house. So perfect. So we definitely work on that. And our goal is also to just um, I talked to Welbeck um and I, I told him I was like, you know, I was like, will, will he agree that if he gets more work, he's just gonna recruit more local people because they're right there in the town anyway, and they could just, and he's training them. And he has other people training, so that's perfect. They could be working on a few projects. It seemed like he's the one that's really motivated about building homes because he's almost finished his second home right now. Yeah, so so perfect. Yeah, I think I just think that, um, I don't know, with the 99 year lease, so the plan is once, you know, whenever I pass away, but before I get that, before that happened, I offered a home to my daughter. If she doesn't want it, my granddaughter. And then miraculously, if none of them want it, I'll offer it to my brother. But in the end, if no one in my family wants it, I'm just going to donate it to the community. And the, um, the people of Ghana can have it. So It's kind of like in America, it becomes a community property. If no one wants it. Yeah, but at least back. I'm to sure a lot of things. Our people. That Somebody in the family would be ready to go to leave America. So it, it'll be fine. And we could just make all this stuff. Um, um, and you know uh, what, what we well, do. But that's my option. The, the more information that we put out there. If no one in my family wants it, I'm okay with giving it to the community. All right, that's perfect. That's perfect. We can all work them things out. But yes, uh, so that's perfect family. So Everything we have set up is for our family and our children and this, so that's it. So once we build, you know, we just build in for that generation and we have industrial areas. So the goal is to get those things, those industries build. So this is just a start and where we going. All right, so appreciate you. And uh, thanks. definitely talk more. Hi everyone. All right, so family, before we close, anybody like to say anything or share anything before we close? We're coming up on a few more minutes before we have to close. So, Bomani, you're going to be there on the 24th, right? Uh, get there. We leave on the 24th. We get to Ghana on the 25th, and then we're going to um, leave from Accra on the 29th to do our land tour. So I got the land tour set for May 29th and December 29th, and it's the same schedule as last year. It just somehow... It always worked for that date because we never changed the dates of the tour. Are you you're gonna send me the information about the vaccine thing? Because <laughs> that was kind of turning me off. Uh, the information about what? Uh, the, the vaccine, what, what they required, what their requirements are. 
Oh yes, um, yes, yeah. Just like putting that thing out today and trying to scroll, scroll to it. So I'll be doing that tonight. But yes, absolutely, oh. I definitely uh, send that to you. Uh, right, once I the call, and um, and get that out to all of our groups. And hopefully, everyone is cool about it and not frustrated. But that's a lot of junk that they put on there. They could have they could have made that the advisory in, in five lines. Yeah. All right, so we have a person here, Sherry. And just trying to make sure, just trying to see who we have on this call. And we have Paul and Patricia. So don't know if I have you on the email list, but whoever gave you the link, or if you get the link from Facebook or somewhere else, appreciate you joining the call. And what I would say, if you have any questions and you want to talk about any of these things, you can just reach out to me uh, directly and things. And that's just for anybody that's watching the video in general, trying to just talk to more people directly to make sure things are clear and we're just on the same page. That way we can build a group with the people that need to be in a group so we can all work together efficiently and things like that. Uh, Cause I want to say when we started, a lot of people committed to the group, but it was just like, I think it was just a, a, a energy of excitement, especially since, you know, we're all in lockdown mode and things like that. And then once a the lockdown mode, this kind of opens up, people decided to do other things, uh, but, Literally just uh, looking to put our energy to making this work. So look forward to just keeping everybody posted with updates and details. And if anyone wants to join our group, uh, just reach out to me. But we have, you have to fill out at least some of the paperwork and make a commitment uh, to at least phase two. Uh, not saying that you have to give any money up front because you don't. Because for the most part, you know, we just need you to take time to process everything. And I want to make sure that, you know, you make the right decision. So it's kind of like asking people to process everything because we want you to make a lifetime decision because that's what our children need. Our children need a lifetime commitment uh, for, for, for generational wealth and all those things that we need to put in place for them. And to start with serious, our uh, greetings. Hi, Ben Bamani. This is Sherry in California. Hey, greetings, Sherry. Uh, maybe your name is a little different on the screen. How you been? I've been doing good. Um, I came on late because I couldn't get on. I don't know why. But anyway, um, I'll contact you. Yes, yes. So we're definitely looking forward to you, you know, traveling to Ghana with us uh, in December. And definitely, you know, there's nothing better than showing people the land. This will be, you know, this coming up will be our fifth and sixth uh, journey to showing the land and things like that. So, and want to show you that phase two that we have, you know, which is our secret weapon to, to get connect with more people. So absolutely, you and I can you know, always talk in our details. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, so fam, once again, this is Bomani Tamba and appreciate, appreciate everybody joining our Black Star Pan-African Community uh, Conference call. And uh, we'll keep everybody posted with all the things that we usually just keep you posted, more videos, more photos, more details, and more updates. All right, so everyone, uh, enjoy your night and you take care. Okay, take care, everyone. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.